Welcome back, you guys. If you've been a longtime subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dustin. Welcome to Revere Glass. So today we're gonna to be making a vortex marble. It's a pretty cool design, very typical in uh, borosilicate glass making. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. So I just chose one of the ways to mess around with a little bit. But yeah, we're gonna be making a vortex marble. I know that we haven't made too many marbles on the torch. So if you have any marble suggestions for videos, please put them down in the comments. I'm really excited to invite my friend Dakota Madrona Glass. He's an awesome glass worker, super talented, and makes incredibly entertaining content. You guys should check it out. He's coming on September 18th for a live workshop. It's only $99 and there's an early bird special right now for the first five people to sign up. We'll give you 25% off. Go ahead and check that out at revereglass.com. If you guys are super into these glass blowing videos and would like a little bit more content or one-on-one -on -one help, please feel free to go to revereglass.com. Check out the school. There's a free trial right now. You can try it out. If you don't like it, you're welcome to cancel at any time. Thanks a lot, you guys, for those of you that are members. It's really great to see the community growing and I love working with you guys. So check out revereglass.com if you're interested in some more content and further education with glass blowing. All right, you guys, we got a lot of really great giveaways for this episode. At the end of the episode, we're gonna be giving away these jacks from the last video, and we're gonna give away the LED Revere Glass Collaboration Sherlock from the last On The Torch video. So stick around to the end to win these two things. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Mountain Glass Arts. They've been a longtime supporter of the glass industry. They provide tools and supplies for so many people all over the world. And every time you make an order, they plant a tree. I can't say enough good things about Mountain Glass. Of course, that's where you should be getting all your tools and supplies. Mountain Glass was kind enough to send us these opals for a giveaway for one of you guys. Just comment in the video. Let us know that you're a glass blower and that you'd like to try out these opals. And we'll send them out to you. Thanks so much. We have two giveaways for this video. Of course, the Vortex Marbles for one of you guys, so make sure you comment on the video. And I'm gonna give away one of these hand-dyed bandanas uh, that were sent to me so graciously by a fan. I'm gonna keep one and I'm gonna give one to you guys. So uh, go ahead and comment on the video if you'd like an official small batch hand-dyed bandana. All right, you guys, that's enough giveaways. There's plenty of stuff to give away. Let's get in the studio, make that Vortex Marble. Make sure you stay to the end so you can find out if you won and comment on the video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much. All right, you guys, welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for joining me today. Super excited to make this vortex marble. And the first step of this particular methodology is encasing the opal. I got this really beautiful sphere opals from Mountain Glass Arts. They're super easy to encase and make sure you comment in this video to win a little package of opals. They aren't the sphere ones, but they are a nice little gram of opals. If you'd like more information on encasing opals, please make sure to check out the video specifically about encasing opals or Revere Glass Online for more information and in-depth resources on how to encase an opal. After I've encased the opal, the next step is to build up a little bit of clear glass in the center here. So I'm using a seven millimeter rod and with marbles, you wanna make sure that all of your glass going into it is really, really clean. So this is new glass I've just gotten out of the box and wiped it down to make sure that it stays really nice and clean all the way as to not trap in any dust or particles and things like that. So now I have the opal encased on a clear punty and I'm gonna push it into my vortex mold. This is basically a cone mold that you can put your glass in and make a little point like that. If you would like to do that by hand, you're welcome to. You don't necessarily need a mold for that, but they do make some and they aren't that expensive. So you could try it both ways. I'm gonna pull down a couple stringers here, first black and then white, and I'm gonna go and try to make an alternating pattern with a little bit more white in between than black. So I'll go to the alternate side, put a line down, and keep going to the alternate side. After that, I'm gonna put some white in between the black lines that I'm laying down, and that will fill in everything nicely and start to create a really nice vortex effect. This is North Star Jet Black. 
I really like this black for if I'm going to be pulling down things a little bit thin because it, it's very dense. So that has a great advantage when you want to pull stringers or thin lines. And this is North Star Star White. I think it's one of the better whites out there. Um, there's a lot of really good whites these days. This one's particularly dense and um, the Snow White by Glass Alchemy is really good as well and also the Grape depending on what circumstances you're using it for. So now I'm using a stringer to just go in between all the lines, fill this up. This is two times the speed, so we'll make sure to put that marker there for you guys so you can tell. I'm just gonna fill this all in. And you can do this multiple ways. You could do this on a 10 millimeter rod, for example, and then twist it and pull it down. But I think the advantages of making it like this is that the rod tends to not get as thin on the bottom. Sometimes you see a vortex marble where you can kind of see through it. Well, I wanted my color to go all the way to the end and I knew that if I made it a little bit thicker and denser, I could do that. So now I'm gonna start twisting it up to create that vortex effect. And I'm gonna start twisting it up at the thickest point because I know that's gonna take the longest to heat up. So I'm really heating up the edge of the glass at the widest point and starting to turn. You can see it's starting to twist on the bottom even though I'm starting to put all the heat on the top. And that's just because the glass there is so much thinner, it takes so much less heat to get it warm. You can see there we go, we got this thing pretty nice and twisted. And let's add a little bit more clear on here. You can see that opal starting to float in the center. Very cool design. All right, let's add a little bit more clear on. We can add some more clear on later uh, if we want to expand that side. So I'm going to heat this up and as I expand it, it's going to stretch out the top of the vortex a little bit. So I'll attach a punty here and then I'll finish up the vortex. Just applying some heat and I can use the mold again if I'd like to or you can just shape it by hand. All right, I'm gonna pop this into the vortex mold. You could really make some big vortex marbles with this mold. Uh, if you think about how much heat you might need for that biggest cone over there, I definitely need a Delta Mag or something really big to melt that nicely. All right, so I'll put this back in the mold, just trying to even anything out. I can twist it up a little bit more if I want to at this point. You can see those lines coming in and making a nice vortex shape. So now I'm gonna wrap a black line around the edge of where the vortex is to give myself a clean separation between the, the clear and the lines. And this will help add some cleanliness and, and help me build up the whole shape of the marble. Now I'm gonna heat up a clear rod, seven millimeter, and start wrapping it around the pointed end and bring it all the way towards that line that I just put in in black and you can see that by doing it this way I'm actually starting to make that sphere shape and you can encase the clear in many different ways here for sure and then I'll go back down and add a little bit more clear on the end but you can see that just putting it on that way really gives me that sphere shape starting out so I'll detach any excess glass and then I'll be able to melt this in make a nice vortex marble so just get a bunch of heat on here, melt that in. It's okay if there's an imperfection in here. It's gonna be covered up and concealed as long as it's not structurally a problem, uh, you should be good. So I'll put this in the mold here, get this nice and even. You can see it's starting to shape. And then once I have that shape ready to go, the next thing I wanna do is coat this in black as to hide my work so you can't see how the vortex goes in there. And it would really be a nice, pleasing kind of illusion for the eye, especially for somebody who uh, doesn't blow glass. It'll give it a lot of depth. All right, just nice and even. I'd love to hear about some of the marbles that you make or some marbles that you'd like me to put in the video. And uh, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you click subscribe. It really helps the channel out a lot. So I'm gonna attach my clear punty to the the side that I just finished. And now I'm gonna add in a little bit more clear glass because I wanna to try to make this more even. Right now it's about a third um, clear glass in the lens and about two thirds 
of the backing. And so I want to try to even that out a little bit and go closer to half and half, but 60-40 would be fine too. So I'm going to heat this up and you can see that middle guideline expanding. Now I'll go back into the mold. Heat this up, turn it around. There we go. All right, now you can see this marble really starting to take shape. Heat that up, put it in the mold. You can see both ends of the vortex through here. It's pretty cool looking. That's one of the treats that we get as glass blowers. We get to really see it in the most beautiful state when it's hot. So I'm gonna take off the punty that's on the backing side and we'll start to add that backing up. And you can see that um, opal in the center, the spherical opal floating right about the hemisphere line, the halfway point. And that's exactly where I wanted to place it. You could put it deeper or more close, closer towards the surface. I like to put them right kind of at that precipice of when the vortex is opening. So I'm gonna wrap this with some black. This is again that North Star Jet Black. Uh, the uh, grape would be a great color here as well, depending on what other stuff you were gonna add onto the backing. So I'll heat this up and go around. And of course you guys, um, we're going through this really fast and if you'd like more information or the, mo the full uh, video footage, please go ahead and go to revereglass.com and the whole video is up there. I'm gonna heat this up, bring that all the way around and then close that off and remove the excess rod. All right, I'll just knock that off and get that ready for my next move. And now I'm gonna heat up the base or the backing of the marble and I'm gonna put it back into the marble mold and smooth everything out. See me smoothing it out, kind of bringing it into the surface. And now I'm gonna be able to decorate the back end of the marble. I'm gonna use this cane or Zanfirico that I got from Mountain Glass Arts. They sent it to me to try and I really enjoyed it. So I know it's available on their website. So if you'd like to try any of this cane, please go ahead and let them know that you saw it in the video here. All right, now I'm gonna start wrapping this around the edge and I'm twisting it in the direction that it's already spiraling. So I'm spiraling it on a little bit more and twisting it right around the edge. You can see it just kind of laying on there and that'll melt in, give a really cool Zanfirico design. And this is of course, double the speed. All right, getting to the end here. And now I'll just try to twist this in as cleanly as I can to make a really nice connection point. And now I'm gonna go with my paddle around the whole thing and even this up, trying to get the line exactly where I want it. Go in on both sides. This is a little taglia paddle. All right, push that together. You can see it looks a little bit like a planet at this point. So I'll put it back in the marble mold and flatten this out a little bit. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is put on some dots for some paisleys. And I pulled a little dot in the center so I could know exactly where the center was and that's gonna be a marker for me. So when I lay down these dots, I'll kind of know where uh, uh, in relation to the center they are. All right, I'll put these on and then I'll use my paddle to flatten them out. Same paddle. All right, we got these three flat. Now I'll add a few more of these things. This marble's coming together, very cool. For those of you guys that make marbles a lot, it's a really cool practice. There's so much you could do with it. All right, heat these up, push them together. There we go, get this nice and even. And then I'll be able to make some cool little paisley patterns. Let's add a couple of small dots in between each one of these. And you can go make different patterns. There's guys who are experts at this uh, dot lane stuff. Definitely check out some people's work that make marbles all the time. All right, put on a couple more dots, flatten these out. And then we're gonna shape them so that it matches the marble. Push that down. Just using a paddle, you can use any sort of paddle for this, a graphite paddle will work just fine. All right, once you get them all flattened down, you wanna grab a clear rod, maybe like a seven millimeter or so, bring it to a small point and heat up in between two dots and then twist. And that motion is gonna to start to bring those dots together 
and make a cool little paisley pattern. Make sure you clean up the stringers after doing this. Knock off any excess color. Just go in between two dots and turn. And heat this up. Stick it in and turn. And then these dots will start to spiral together and make a really cool pattern. And you could do some dot stacking and then spiral them. There's so much, so many avenues that you could do. All right. You can see it kind of coming together. And now I'm going to heat this up and melt it all together. That cane is now melting in and you can see the vortex. Let's put this in the marble mold. You can see that there's a little spot on the cane. A piece actually popped off of there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use use that as a background to fix the mistake and also add in a little bit more excitement to the piece. All right, turn this around. Put that in the marble mold. We want to get this really nice and round before the last step, the second to last step, which would be attaching a Marini. So I'm going to heat this up right where that's broken a little bit, pop the Marini on. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can break it off with your hand, or you can break it off with the nippers. The pop and snap will just put on pressure, but my punty is not really in a great position to do that right now. So I'm going to use my nippers. I'll pop that off, and there you go. I have a marini on the outside, like a little bow tie. Add some clear onto there, and that'll preserve the shape and the design. Take that off, smash that in and then melt it all together. You can see the marini now on the outside. Um, I think it turned out pretty cool, the way that the lines flow into that. And then once you get it this far, your next steps are just to make sure this is as round as you can make it. So I'm gonna remove my last attached punny, fully attached punny. And now I'm gonna start using the seal scale to go down in uh, seal level from hot seal to cold seal. So this one I'm on is about a seven the one that was initially was a 10 a fully sealed piece and then i'm going to switch it to the other side and go to about a five seal putting it back into the mold switching the access turning it around you can see that vortex in there put it in the mold one more time you can see those paisleys everything spinning around and then we'll pop this in a different marble mold just so I could walk it to the kiln pop it off with the back of my tweezers here there we go and now I'm gonna grab my mini torch polish that off you can see it see the marble here you can see that vortex the spiral going back and forth I think that the marini on the side turned out really well uh, covering up the flaw there and then of course the paisleys on the back that blue and purple color with the lines kind of wisping into each other. Anyway, please comment on the video. This marble's for one of you guys. I really appreciate you guys watching. All right, you guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for checking out that Vortex marble. It was really fun to make, and I love making marble, so hopefully I get to make a couple more for you guys. I was thinking about a galaxy marble, some other fun stuff like that. Anyway, of course, let me know what you want to see in the comments, and also comment to win the Vortex marble and one of these dope bandanas. All right, I got some questions that you guys have asked. The first question is from Halunka Records, and they'd like to know when I started incorporating the Bunsen into my work, and how has it improved my work and flow, basically? And I think that's a great question. I started to incorporate it um, when I was using a lathe, of course, but on the bench, I think is kind of where you're headed with the question, is maybe in um, 2008, maybe something like that, Preston Hanna was coming to the studio a little bit, and I know I've mentioned his name a couple times before and giving him credit for showing me how to use the Bunsen on the bench like that. I think around that time is when I, I incorporated it into my bench work, and since then it's really added a tremendous amount of ability to keep things out of the kiln and keep things working for a long time. It's increased my crack repair. It's definitely had a significant impact, and that's why I wanted to share it with you guys last week. So I really appreciate the questions, and I would definitely recommend getting a Bunsen for your bench it's pretty inexpensive and it adds a lot 
The next question is from Espada Shizno. They'd like to know what I would recommend if they should go to a public studio and learn to blow glass there or start buying their own equipment. And the answer is kind of dependent on what your situation is and what studios are local to you. If there's a great studio that'll allow you to make pipes with a good mentor close by, I would definitely recommend that. If you can afford to buy your own equipment and have a nice space for it and would like to sign up to the online school and work with me, I'd recommend that as well. So I think you kind of got to feel out your situation, what's local around you, and then reach out to the best resources that you have. Either way, I think you should start blowing glass and it's an amazing thing to get into. It's relaxing, you feel really good and in the flow and you get to share beautiful artwork with your friends in the world. The next question is from Ruben Ramirez and I'm really glad that you asked this question Ruben because a lot of people don't know what I'm about to say. Some people do and for those of you that do, you're welcome to skip ahead to the uh, giveaway, which is coming up next. All right, so Ruben is asking, why when the transition happens in the video, my logo highlights the numbers and symbols in my logo? And the reason is, is that there's six numbers, 710 and 420. I'm sure you guys all know what 420 means. So that's the last three letters of my logo. The four dots on the E, the two in the negative space in the R, and then the zero or blank space in the last E. That equals 420. The 710 is a little less common, but that's a hash number. It means hash oil, basically. The reason why it's 710, as that's the numerical code for hash oil, is because of the way that it's written. 710 flipped upside down equals oil. And so that's been a thing in California uh, for years and years, and it's kind of a niche market, but I did want to include that in my logo as well, specifically oil and the numerical equivalent to 420. So I did want to include the 710 in my logo because it symbolizes the oil and the counterpart to the flower that's also in my logo. So I hope that answers your questions. Definitely you can Google this stuff. I'm sure there's plenty of more information on it. And um, I like to add in some little things, little surprises, and I really appreciate you guys paying attention and uh, seeing the little details that we add in. All right, you guys, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give away these jacks. Thank you, Mountain Glass Arts, for giving these to me to give to one of you guys. And we're gonna give away this Sherlock by LED Glass Art and myself. We're gonna give these jacks away to Dat Badger 420. I'm really happy that you're blowing glass and I see that you don't have a pair of jacks, so please enjoy these ones. Make sure you let Mountain Glass Arts know that you've appreciated their gift as well. Thank you so much. All right, we're gonna be giving this Sherlock away to Matt Broadman. Thank you so much for your continued longtime support of the channel. And this is a really beautiful Sherlock, so please enjoy this. It was a pleasure making it, and I'm happy to send it off to you. Make sure you guys comment in this video to win the Vortex Marble and one of these awesome bandanas and those opals. All right, you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.